in Paul Morland. And David, of course, had to come through that last incredible match against Tom Curry, which went into a tiebreaker. David, have you got your composure back after that game? Yeah, I think so. I'm still a little bit shaky after it. It was a very close match. Tom was fairly unlucky to lose, I think. Well, I guess you couldn't come up against much more pressure than that. No, I'm very pleased with the way I came through it, in fact. David Hardy going for his sixth win in a row comes from Kippering on Queensland's Redcliffe Peninsula. His highest game is 289 with a high series over three games of 792. Paul, you're bowling, of course, on your home lanes. What sort of an advantage is that? Oh, it gives me a little bit of an advantage, but as you can see, I'm seated four, so there's a lot of good bowlers around. Uh, We've a lot of the players have had a trouble with lane 12. Now, do you know the secrets to it? I hope I do. I'll soon find out. I've got, I have a little bit of trouble on it. Mainly lane 11 is my trouble. And the defending champion for the Coca-Cola Classic is Paul Morland. He's a plumber. He comes from the suburb of Slacks Creek, situated very close to Logan City. And, of course, he's bowling on his home lanes. His biggest tournament win was the Coca-Cola Championship in 1985. His highest game is 280 with a high series of 751. But since winning the Coca-Cola Classic, he's taken up the Cool Foam Classic also at Logan City Lanes. So the stage is set for a big match now between David Hardy looking for six straight wins up against the defending champion Paul Morland. Big moment for both of them, but particularly Paul Morland. As defending champion, he's got that little added pressure, that extra weight on his shoulders. And David Hardy, who's been through such incredible pressure, I think as uh, David has said, he's got nothing to lose. He came into the tournament virtually as an unknown, and whatever he does from here on is just a bonus. Certainly is. He certainly earned himself a lot of bonus money in the tournament. He came in in ninth place, and that was worth only $300, and he's moved all the way up for this position. He's uh, already doubled his potential winnings, and of course he's only a few matches away now from winning a trip to America. So David Hardy, pick up these two for his spare. I suppose after that incredible pressure of that tied match against Tom Curie, it'll be very hard to keep that concentration level up. He picks up the spare. That was a good comment, John, because he did lose concentration halfway up there, and that ball almost got away from him. Very fortunate to get those two pins in the spare. Well, David Hardy really has become a home state hero, but this fellow will have tremendous crowd support. The defending champion bowling on his home lines. And that pin just rocking but not falling for Paul Morland. Yes, Paul uh, using a little bit of experience there and uh, getting David to start the match off. As the oncoming bowler, he had the option of dictating proceedings. And he put Hardy into play first. See if it works to his advantage at the end of the tournament. But, uh, boy, that's a terrible opening. Well, that was a sign of nerves, undoubtedly, from Paul Morland. And it wasn't a good delivery. In fact, he just didn't roll that ball out. You could hear the thump as it uh, as it hit the lane and watch it again oh yes he lands it about halfway down the lane just lost it completely so an open frame but hits back brilliantly with a strike well done paul morland champions so often come back with strikes after a silly error and that first one was a very Bad mistake by Paul Morland. He knows it now, but uh, I don't think we'll see too many more mistakes from the champion. Of course, in this match play style for uh, television, the higher seeded player has the right to elect whether he or his opponent bowls first. Paul Morland, a higher seed, asks David Hardy to bowl the first frame, and then it's two frames apiece. And a little bit of luck going the way of David Hardy. He could have been left with uh, a next to impossible split and that uh, last pin not fallen but over it went so he should be able to pick up these two for his spare in the second going for the pin number 610 big deep breath We saw him do that against Tom 
Curie last night to give Tom the chance to win that exciting match. Sailing past the six pin once again. So at the completion of the first frame, David Hardy held a lead of nine pins, 18 to nine. But of course, he's left that open frame in the second. Now he goes over to lane 11 to bowl his third frame. And I can't be sure, John, but I think that David may have changed bowling balls. There's uh, two, four, six, seven bowling balls on the rack out there. I don't know who belongs to which ball, but I don't think that he was bowling with that one last night. Now he must make sure of this pin. It looks easy, but under pressure, and knowing he had an open frame in the second, it can be difficult, but well done. Right in the belly of the pin, he struck it. Now Paul Morland to bowl his third frame. Had an open frame in the first, then a strike in the second. A good comeback. David Hardy showing much better balance that time. Paul Morland taking time to get set. a sign of nerves from Paul Morland. Listen, Paul's uh, changing deliveries. He's got a different ball out for the spare. This one will go straighter. There's a chance. Oh dear. Almost pulled it off. The second frame, Paul Morland had taken the lead by one pin. He trailed by nine after the first, but then took the lead after the second, 28 to 27. With that open frame in the third, and David Hardy with a spare in the third. And again, a comeback from Paul Morland. Well, open frame strike, open frame strike is his pattern. And once again, we see lane 12, the arch enemy of the right handed bowlers. And the surprising thing that Paul Morland said to us in the pre match interview that it was lane 11 that he felt gave him the trouble. Yes. A fickle game, 10-pin bowling. So now David Hardy. That's a good-looking shot. Takes the lead by 10 pins. 47 plays 37 at the end of three. David's a computer hacker. He uh, likes fiddling with his computer, and apart from that, all he does is bowl and uh, get prepared to get married. Just has a little bit of driving, I must admit, to, uh, to get himself some money. He's a, an owner driver at Kippering, which is to the north of Brisbane. Trouble for David Hardy. And a wry smile from David Hardy as he walks back, contemplating how he'll go about trying to pick up the spear. And he's changed bowling balls. Uh, this will be a harder case bowling ball. He'll try and slide the ball out along the right-hand gutter and just clip the right-hand side of the six pin. But he hung on to the ball too long. And instead of having a go for it, he ended up playing it safe. I would have thought uh, by picking up that ball that he was having a go, but he couldn't get out of it cleanly. Well, as we come towards the finals, perhaps the pressure and the nerves starting to tell with great prize money, $2,000 to the winner, plus, of course, the men's and ladies' winners will be flying to America with Qantas to compete in that tournament in Las Vegas. Well, Paul's really in trouble on lane 12. He's uh, done nothing on that lane at all. Missed a spare by a long way, and then he had a split in the third frame, and now a rather fortunate nine count. He's got the spare this time. And with a nine or a strike, he takes the lead after five frames. So really a, a game of fluctuating fortunes here at the minute. David Hardy 
first in front and then Paul Morland, then back to David Hardy at the end of the fourth. David Hardy was in front by nine, but Paul Morland will go back into the lead. And Hardy keeps his lead. He has a two-pin lead, courtesy of Paul Morland's six count. Yes, an unexpected lapse there by uh, Paul Morland, which allows David Hardy luckily to stay in front 75 to 73 and this for the spare which he's got after winning this televised tournament last year paul morland uh, did some motivational work on himself with the help of some friends and ended up winning quite a few tournaments in 1986 but he needs to start working on himself now he's in trouble so david hardy at the top of the sixth frame Certainly the crowd favourite. Yes, he certainly won them over with some magnificent performances, particularly that uh, incredible last match he played against Tom Curie. Well, I think one of the games that would have endeared him to the crowd was his 255 against that West Australian, uh, Steve, Steve Wimbridge. Wimbridge. Yeah. Fantastic. Puts the pressure right back on Paul Morland now. And we'll have another look at this strike. It was a seven pin. Look at that seven pin standing. I don't know what hit it. Probably David screaming at it might have helped. Nothing else seemed to go anywhere near it. Well, can Paul Morland come back now? He needs a strike. He's at the top of the seventh. <laughs> and gets it beautifully bowled. So is David Hardy. <laughs> relaxes Paul Morland goes into action and Morland that time uh, bowling the ball of a man possessed that one came out of nowhere look at this one come up beautifully under pressure so despite a poor opening by Morland with two open frames out of the first three he's come back well so Paul Morland going over to bowl the tenth frame trailing by 12 at the completion of the seventh He needs to keep on striking. Well, he needs to get this spear and get a strike and hope that David Hardy doesn't continue on his merry way. Well, he has to concentrate hard about this. Well, and boy. Takes it. well done. Oh, -ho. he didn't waste any time about it. No, had the desired result. He certainly didn't. Got up there at 100 miles an hour. Very quickly into action. He's taking a bit more time now because he knows that he needs a very good count. He needs a nine or a strike to make Hardy stay clean. Hooking back in. And a strike it is. 191 for Paul Morland. And Paul Morland, as he sits down, just nods to David Hardy as much as to say well it's up to you David you've bowled well so far it's been a good game great sportsmanship between these two yeah, great sportsmanship between all of the bowlers so far we've had six different states represented in this virtual state of origin tournament this year but now Hardy can he make it five Paul Morland has finished with 191 looks good over they go And the bolter strikes again. Five strikes in a row. And six wins in a row. Well, the Australian record number of television wins in a row belongs to uh, South Australia's Rod Bayless. He once won ten matches on the trot. Now David Hardy has six. And there's his very proud mum. So David Hardy to bowl out the match. Oh, yes! So his sixth win in a row. And his sixth strike in a row. 
Coming in sixes for David Hardy. And if he gets another strike here, that'll give him a 225 game and increase his average over the six games to about 215. Fantastic performance on national television by David Hardy, only 23 from Brisbane. strikes. I think that's the second time he's done it. He got two four baggers in one game. So the second time he's got eight strikes in a match. And he wins by 225 to 191. champion Paul Morland bows out but he takes away the check for $600 for finishing in fifth place. Well done Paul, I guess it's the old saying, when you're hot, you're hot and your opponent really was running hot. He's too hot for me. <laughs> well done Paul. Yeah, thank you very much. Great tournament. Paul Morland, well David Hardy, well done again and uh, finishing another match with eight strikes the second time you've done it, doing seven in a row at the end. I guess uh, you'd be pretty happy with that comeback. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that. I dropped one of them in the in the middle of them, but I was lucky enough to carry the, the, the pins. So, well, we'll see what happens next time. After now. that great match against Tom Curie, did you find it a little bit hard to just get right back to your top at the start of that last game? Yes, it was a little bit. I was a little bit shaky to start with. But I think I came through in the end. Well, you come up against the left-hander, Alan Atkins, in your uh, next match. Can he keep on winning? We'll find out soon on Nine's Wide World of Sports, but in fact, our next game is going to be in the ladies' competition. And the ladies' giant killer, Joe Allen Day, from the Gold Coast, will play Mary Flower. You'll be seeing that soon in the Coca-Cola Classic from the Logan City Lanes. Yeah.